I got my first job as a software developer on November 18, 2016 from Nationwide Insurance. And less than three hours later, <laughs> I kid you not, less than three hours later, I was poached and hired on a spot as a software engineer for another company when the founder of that startup offered me almost double my previous salary to come work for him. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you the story of how I got hired on the spot as a software engineer and tell you how you can put yourself in a position to get hired on the spot as well. So definitely make sure that you watch this video all the way through because I'll be telling you the most impactful way to network that'll create the most opportunities for you in any role, not just tech. So if you're new here, my name is TJ and I'm a self-taught software engineer that teaches beginners how to code while sharing some of my stories and insights from working in the tech field. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more insights and comment below any questions that you have and I'll get back to you. All right, now after spending about a year teaching myself how to code and job searching for two months, I got my first job offer from Nationwide Insurance on November 18, 2016 to work as a test automation developer with a starting salary of $59,000 a year. Now, that might not sound like a lot of money to some of you, but remember, my last job, I was making $39,000 a year working as a business analyst. So to go from $39,000 a year to $59,000 a year, uh, yeah, sign me up. Like, that's a $20,000 increase. And I know a $20,000 salary increase is something that most people would be excited about. And I definitely was. So. I quickly signed the offer letter and I emailed it back to the recruiter, then went about my day. It just so happened that the day I was going about, I had a meeting scheduled with the founder of a small startup three hours later, so I started getting ready for that meeting. Quick backstory, I found out about the founder for this startup from a tech event that I went to and I had to leave early before I had a chance to even speak with him. So the next day after that event, I sent him this email. Hi Marcus, great job judging yesterday at the Pitch Black event. I'm sorry I didn't get to say hi before leaving. Are you free this Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for me to come by your office and learn more about you, your company, and any other advice you might have? We haven't gotten to know each other yet and I know that you're someone I can learn a lot from. And also, I'm open to volunteering if there's anything you think I can help you with. Now, take notes on this. First, when you're trying to network with someone, you always want to lead with value. And the best way to do that is to see if there's anything that they're working on and offer the help. Most of the time, there won't be, but people will always appreciate the fact that you asked because most people don't get asked this question. And also, this is a good way to make a very strong first impression. Second, and this is really important, when you're networking through email with busy founders and CEOs, etc., keep the email short and concise. You don't want them to open up your email and be overwhelmed by how long it looks. So be direct and ask them a yes or no question that can move the conversation to the next stage. So here, the next stage for me was being able to come visit him in his office and I made things easy by giving him an exact time and date to decide on. Either it's a simple yes and the meeting's confirmed or it's a no because the time doesn't work for him and he'll reply back with the time that does work for him. Or it's just a no response that could be for a number of reasons. You can't really take those things seriously, all right? But rule of thumb here, when it comes to following up with people, it's okay to follow up twice after the initial email before calling it quits. So if I didn't get a response from this message, I had two more times to message him and then I would stop after the third time if I didn't get a response. Again, get straight to the point in your emails, make the decision to the next stage clear and concise and lead with value. That's exactly how you should be trying to network with people. Now, if you want to know how to meet the right group of people to network with, the best thing that you can do is to look for events online and in person and lead with value. What I used to do was go to eventbrite.com and meetup.com to search for events that had the kind of people that I wanted to meet. Then I would reach out to the organizer 
and see if there's anything that I could help with, which would often result in me volunteering at one of their next events. And this is where the genius of networking by volunteering actually shows up. When you volunteer to help with an event, the organizer sees you in action working to help forward their cause. The people attending the event will associate you with that event and they'll approach you for help, making it easy for you to now meet a whole lot of people and make a good first impression simply just by helping them, which is what you're, you're there volunteering to do. And when they need help, they'll approach you instead of you trying to awkwardly meet people like you normally would at an event. And most importantly, most events have guest speakers that they bring out. And since you're a volunteer, that means you have backstage access to the guest speakers. And you might even be the volunteer assigned to help the speaker get set up. Come on. Now, I'm sure that you can see how good of an impression you can make on a lot of people simply by even just doing this once. And this is how you can put yourself in a position to get hired on the spot. And volunteering, like, it just makes it so easy for people to actually really want to help you. You know, networking by helping others first is the best way to put yourself in a position to have many good opportunities come your way. Now, back to the story of how I got hired on the spot. Since I was broke and unemployed at the time, the only thing of value that I could really offer Marcus, who was the startup founder, was my time and seeing if there was anything that I could actually help with. That was my mindset going into this meeting. I was going there to meet him, learn more about his background and his company, and see if there's anything that I could help him out with. So next time that you meet someone new that you wanna network with, ask them what they currently work on and see if there's anything that you can do to actually help them achieve it. And that's it, like that one tip will help you to stand out because most people don't get asked that question. Like, when is the last time that you met someone and they asked you what they could do to help you achieve whatever goal you were working on, right? Comment that down below. Like, let me know when was the last time that actually happened to you. Anyways, Marcus replied back the next day with his office address and we agreed to meet on November 18th. And I still remember pulling up to his office it was in this two-story building that just looked like, man, it, it, what I'll say is that this building definitely looked like there was a startup inside, all right? Anyways, I get to his office and he starts telling me about the company and what they do. After we finished talking about that, he now asked me what I did for a living and I said, well, I just got offered an internship in Silicon Valley for the month of December to go work as a software engineer for, for a startup out there. And when I get back, I'll be starting my full-time job as a test automation developer for Nationwide Insurance in January. And then he said, oh, you code? And I was like, yeah, I code. And then he jokingly asked me, but are you a beast at coding? And I was like, yeah, I'm a beast. <laughs> now, real quick, some people might not feel comfortable with that, with that exchange because they might feel like it's bragging, but those people are missing the point. This conversation just turned into a job interview with that question. This man didn't even know that I wrote code before and now he knows, right? And he's now inquiring about my skills somehow, some way. So keep in mind, whenever you're in a job interview, your job is to confidently sell yourself, period. All right, so I was like, yeah, I'm a beast. And then he said, okay, cool. Show me something that you've built. So I pulled out my laptop and went to the website for this app I built called Mute Twitter Spoilers. And the app was pretty simple. I built it for my coding portfolio when I used to watch Mr. Robot on TV and people would always tweet spoilers on Twitter. So I was like one day, you know what? I'm gonna build an app where it will let me mute a bunch of people in the same time based on whatever keyword I entered, right? So the app also let me unmute everyone at the same time as well. Now, the funny thing is Twitter actually added the functionality to mute different keywords and phrases maybe like four to six months after that, right? And they didn't even tell me thank you. All right, but hey, Elon, Twitter. 
You're welcome, <laughs> JK. Anyways, Marcus then went back to the website for the app, logged in, searched a keyword, and then muted everyone on his timeline that had tweets with that keyword in it. Then he went to his actual Twitter page and checked to make sure that those people were actually muted and they were. Then he went back to my app and unmuted everyone and everything worked perfectly. He was like, wow, <laughs> it works. <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I can't lie, y'all. I, I, I was like definitely nervous, right? I was hoping that the app wouldn't crash at the worst possible time. Anyways, he likes the app like a lot. And then he asked me this question I never thought I would actually be asked in real life. He says to me, what's your number? How much would it take for you to turn down the internship and turn down the full-time job to come work for me full-time instead? And in my head, I'm like, man, where is Ashton Kutcher? Like, I'm, I'm definitely being punked because nobody just asked that question. You know, like, has that, has that ever happened to you? <laughs> like, comment that down below. Has someone ever asked you that? So I really thought that I was being punk, but then I was like, hold on, this guy looks serious. And if he's serious and I give him a number that's too low, I'm going to be upset with myself and think, dang, I should have asked for a lot more money. <laughs> but then also I'm thinking, if I say a number that's too high, he might laugh and just be like, oh, this guy's a clown and he just blew a good opportunity. So it was tough, but I was just really trying to figure out like what a good number was, you know, like what was a good number that I felt good about? One that I didn't think was too low or too high, but a number that I would be happy with no matter what happened. So I told him that my number was, well, actually, before I say that, Y'all tell me, how much would you say your number is, right? Like, how much would you have asked for if someone offered to hire you on the spot, right? This is a manifestation exercise, all right? So comment down your answer below. Like, how much would you have asked for if he offered to hire you on the spot? Anyways, I told him my number was $70,000. That was my number back then, especially since I was coming from making $39,000 and my job with Nationwide Insurance was only paying me $59,000. So to me, $70,000 was almost double my previous salary of $39,000. And back then in 2016, you could get a nice apartment in downtown Austin with a salary of $70,000, all right? Uh, not no more, but back then you definitely could. So I said $70,000. Then Marcus looked down for a couple seconds, and then he looked up and he was like, OK, cool. And then I just kind of stood there and just stared at him like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> he was just like, OK, look, send over your resume and I'll get that to my CFO and he'll get an official offer letter out to you tomorrow. OK. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll send that over later. And I left this office to go have lunch with my girlfriend. <sighs> Y'all. I did not send this man my resume at all. <laughs> yep. I just went about my day. <laughs> but look, the thing that you have to understand is I already secured a job offer with Nationwide Insurance, which is a large nationally recognized company. And I also had an internship with a startup in Silicon Valley. And now this person that I just met, right? This person that I just met is offering to hire me on the spot and for me to drop everything else that I just secured. I don't know about you, but to me, that just seemed very risky and I wasn't really sure what to do, right? So I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel comfortable risking a, what I felt was a guaranteed thing for something that I wasn't even sure if it was real. So I just went about my day. But then later on that night, I'm at my girlfriend's place and she just casually asked me, so whatever happened to that guy you said offered you a job today? Did you end up sending him your resume? I said, no, not yet. I'm still thinking about it. And then suddenly my phone starts ringing. I pick up the phone and it's Marcus, the startup founder that just offered me a job on the spot. 
He says, hey man, I just, I just want to increase the job offer to $75,000. I was like, wow, <laughs> y'all, why did I respond by saying, are you giving me a raise before I even start? And he says, yeah, um, I know that you have a lot of companies chasing after you right now. And I just want you to know that I'm, that I'm really serious about this offer and moving forward with you. So if you are ready to move forward and we can agree on $75,000 a year, then send me your resume and we'll get an offer letter out to you by tomorrow morning. Y'all, I sent him my resume so fast, like, as soon as we hung up, I, I grabbed my laptop and I was just banging away, <laughs> sending him my resume. Like, $75,000 was a life-changing salary for me back then. I felt like I was rich. And I mean, honestly, yeah, I was rich back then. <laughs> like, $75,000 was a really big jump for me, coming all the way from $39,000 a year. So to now get my dream job as a software engineer, making 75,000K, that's more than I could have ever asked for. So yeah, I was very happy about that offer. And uh, I honestly didn't really feel too bad the next day when I had to call the recruiter for Nationwide Insurance. And I just simply told him that I'm going to have to turn down the job offer that they gave me, that I found something that works better for my situation so that I could stay here in Austin instead of having to move to Arizona for that job. And then I emailed the company for the internship in Silicon Valley and I let them know that I wasn't gonna be able to do the internship either. All right, and yeah, that's it. That's how I got hired on the spot and hopefully all of those networking tips are tips that you actually wrote down and that you fully understand. But even if not, the thing that you have to remember is one of the best ways that you can network with people is to volunteer, lead with value. All right. So again, uh, comment below any questions that you might have about my journey and make sure that you subscribe to my channel and help me out by liking this video. All right. Thank you.